what's up guys it's josh back with another video and today i wanted to show you guys a graphics design editing software that's free and open source that you can use on any linux operating system So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys a graphics editing software called Krita. And this is free and open source software. And you can use it on Linux, any Linux distribution. You can also use it on Windows and Mac OS, but it's an awesome application that you can use to edit photos as well as freehand graphics within this application. And GIMP is mainly what I use when I'm doing photo editing but I always like to have an alternative sitting around. So I thought this would be an interesting application to show you guys, especially if you're into photo editing and you don't have the budget to pay for some of the Adobe products or all these different proprietary software that's out there when it comes to photo editing. So let's hop right over to Krita's website so I can show you guys a little bit more about it. Okay, so we are at krita.org, and this is where you can actually find the application that I'm talking about. And as you can see on the front page, it says Krita is a professional free and open source painting program. It is made by artists that want to see affordable art tools for everyone. And it specializes in concept art, texture, and matte painters and illustration, but it's also, it also can be used as a great photo editing software and I'll show you guys a little bit of that once we open up the actual application and play around with it but as you can see it's available on Windows Linux and Mac OS so you can use it on all three different platforms and I want to reiterate this it's free and open source so that's one of the reasons I want to push this application because it's an open source tool that doesn't cost you a dime to actually download and actually use. You just have a learning curve and that's just like when working with any piece of software out there. I know when people would say, oh yeah, Adobe products are the best when it comes to editing software. And so you went out and purchased Adobe Photoshop and spend all that money on the actual application and then find out that there is a big learning curve to actually get into that. Now I know it's a lot of people out there that use Photoshop and have been using Photoshop for years and it's kind of hard to transition over to another photo editor, but Krita is not that difficult for people to actually pick up, especially if you have some photo editing experience, it's just certain things will be called something different and it's similar to GIMP. You know what I'm saying? It has a lot of the same features you can get in Photoshop. It's just called something slightly different or the icon is a little bit different from what it is in Photoshop or what you're used to seeing in Photoshop. But let's check out the website a little bit and scroll down. The reason I wanted to highlight this actual application because uh, Krita 5.0, the beta, you know, five released uh around uh this month i know for sure so uh, this article was released i'm not sure if it was released today that day on the third but anyway i just wanted to i kind of show you guys this because they have a beta out right now and i'm sure there are going to be some new features that come in once the release is finalized and they actually push out the new version of the software to everybody now if we scroll back up to the top they do have uh well this will show you the features right there so you can go to features uh and i know a lot of people do animation with this actual uh application and that's something that they specialize in you know drawing you know anime or something like that if you're into that type of stuff then this application was kind of centered around that type of artistry and then you can look at the gallery they have some gallery uh images that you can actually check out from people that have actually created things using this software and as you can see this is a dope application once you figure out how to actually use it but you can also use it for editing software or editing photos like i said so let's go back over to the main site but they do have some interviews on there i won't click on those um but 
one cool thing I want to show you on here, they do have a learning tab or a manual that you can actually go through and it'll teach you how to actually use this application. Uh, so they got tutorials, how, how to's, and I've seen a lot of resources for this application on YouTube. There are plenty of people out here showing you how to actually use this software. It has a big following, uh, as you could have seen by the uh, artist's location where people can upload their images and show their work that they've created within this actual application. So there is a big following behind it. Uh, and I definitely want you guys to actually check it out. So let's go down and open it up and check out the actual application. And I can show you guys some of my minimal editing skills when it comes to photos. <laughs> so, so I'll be back in a second. So today for this demonstration, I'll be using Ubuntu Studio. This is an excellent Ubuntu based distribution that focuses on graphics design as well as audio and editing and includes a lot of the creative software that's out there, especially open source software that runs on the Linux operating system. So they have alternatives to recording music, you know, kind of like Fruity Loops. They have alternatives for that and applications that allow you to do photo editing and different things like that. They're all included within this distribution. So that's why I wanted to show you guys this distribution when we go into Critter. Now this application is already installed. Uh, it's under the graphics design. So let's go down and open it up right fast, but it's a very simple install. If you're using the Debian, or any Debian based distribution, then all you have to do is type sudo apt install critter and that'll install the application for you. Now, as you can see, this is critter. I have it open. Uh, this is basically what it actually looks like. And I'll open a file right fast and I have a download, uh, download an image in here. And I just kind of wanted to give you guys the overview of how it actually works and how it looks. As you can kind of see or tell, it kind of looks like Photoshop at the end of the day. You have all your tools on the left hand side uh, and you also have the advanced options when it comes to it. And then as you can see, you got your layers, you got your channels. Uh, so all that different stuff, you know, just like in Photoshop, you know, is here. And maybe not all of it, but majority of it is here. As you can see, I just wanted to open up. This is a picture I got from pexel.com. That's a great place to get photos that are all free to use for whatever you're trying to use it for. And I just wanted to open it up just, or I just wanted to open up something so you guys can see something open within the application. Now, just so you guys know, I'm not that great at editing photos. Uh, the most I could do is my thumbnails, you know what I'm saying, with the different layers and adding text and changing photos a little bit or adding gradient and messing with the opacity a little bit in order to make it pleasing on the eyes. But I'm in no way a photo editor. So don't beat me up too bad if I explain something a little off or if I don't fully understand something and kind of skip it. But just to cover the menu, we can start up here at the top, but it says, uh, you know, this is the file uh, and this is your basic file buttons that you can uh, click. Like you want to create a new document, open a, a recent, you know, open a new one, save, you know, save as, uh, export it into something different. So you can export into different formats. So they have JPEG, you know, and pretty much all the different types, PNGs, you can, you know, save the files in whatever format you want based on that. So let me hit cancel there. Um, but you got other things in here like import animation frames, which I don't know how to use that. I've never used that before. Uh, and then close, you know, close all and quit. So if you got multiple documents open, you can close them. But under editing, you know, you got your simple cut and paste, you know, fill with foreground co colors. And they got your different colors somewhere on here. And that's it right there. That's your different colors, you know, that you can use or whatever. But that's cool. They had that option there. You know what I'm saying? You could just feel something with the foreground color or the background color, you know, feel with a pattern uh, special. Uh, that's some opacity stuff. It looks like um, now view. You can show canvas only. 
you know it's just a bunch of options that you can go through to change the view of how everything looks and super cool to see a full screen mode so that's dope to see I, I know some people like to look at the rulers you know what i'm saying you can check out the rulers of the actual image but you can turn those things on and off you know as you need them now if we go into image image you know what i'm saying image background color or transparency uh you could trim the image size uh rotate you know all your different stuff that you could do under here with the image you can do uh your different layers cut paste you know move layers around transform you know all that good stuff under there uh select so you can select certain things so if you got different things on a layer then you can select it all or select all the layers i'm assuming uh reselect uh you know and a couple other options feather selection so if you have some selected i'm sure this will show up to allow you to actually click on it you got filters blur which oh that's easy right there yeah and like i've played around with this software before just messing with my thumbnails in this application but i do most of my editing in gimp and a lot of this stuff you know is in the same location you know what i'm saying in critter as in gimp and photoshop so and then under here you got your tools so they do have scripts out there um and i'm assuming you can add more to it i'm not 100 percent sure but it says import python uh plugins which i haven't you know played around with it i'm assuming you get batch out certain things so if you got if you got a couple photos that are exact same size or something you need to shrink them all like in a list and you can run a script against them and shrink them and make them all the same dimension so you can put them on a website or whatever you're trying to do you know to batch things out make things a whole lot quicker uh so settings this is some of the settings for it and actually let's go back let's go over here to the help and open up about critter uh and just to look at the current version that we got we got 4.2.9 so that's the version we have the most stable version of the actual application that's within the debian repository so let's hit close on that and if we go back here there is a handbook you know you could pull that up and that should be a help for you. It'll basically bring up the help manual, you know, online. So let's go on and close that out. And let's just go through the top bar. And I'm sure you can move this around. That's basically what that is right there. You can adjust that if you want to, move it to the side, move it wherever you want to. Um, it's certain pieces that you can move around. Let's say you wanna uh, move the gradients, you know, in front of something else or, you know, stretch it out so that's super dope that that's there but that's obviously creating a new document saving or opening an existing document and save right there then you got your undo redo you know your gradients uh fill patterns uh that's your color palettes it's your pre-selected colors you know you can play around with um this is your brush setting so you can go to that as well you can choose brush presets right here uh, this is the blending mode, uh, set your eraser mode, uh, preserve alpha, reload a regional preset. So if you have some presets set, then you can reload them there. Opacity, sizes, uh, that's the size right there. That is, a, I believe that's a mirroring tool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's the horizontal and vertical mirroring tool. And then this is, I think this is the workspaces. Uh, now if we go back over here on the left this is basically your toolbar so i mean if you guys you know have used photoshop or you're familiar with any editing software you probably understand a lot of these tools they pretty much look the same some of them obviously the image looks a little bit the same um, like the color selector tool that's there you know me measuring tools uh reference you know image tool uh select tools you know rectangles you know all that all that all that good stuff is in here so that's basically all your tools right there pan zoom you know all that good stuff and then over here on the right you got your advanced color settings so you can go around and play around with that uh this is you know some tool options as well as overview and i believe that has to do with what's selected and yeah, maybe not and then like i said right here this is the layers and the channels uh, so you can play around with that that's how you 
you know, manage your layers. You can basically add a new layer, you know what I'm saying? Just add something to it and then let's say we want to paint on top of this. Right now it's selected on black, you know what I'm saying? So you play around with that and that's all on that layer. And let's say you, you know, want to remove that layer. You could just basically remove it and everything you just paint it on it. And then you can also adjust the opacity of a layer. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's super cool. And then right now here is the brush presets. So you can go through and select certain things based on what you're looking for. But that's pretty much it about Critter. I didn't want to go too far into the actual program and show you guys how to actually edit certain things. I don't think I'm at that level to actually teach people how to edit photos. That's something you'll probably find at a at a YouTube channel that focuses on photo editing, but this is an excellent software and I think you guys should check it out. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're into photo editing and you don't have the money to spend on Photoshop and all these expensive proprietary software out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you can, just go down and uh, comment down below what editing software you're actually using. My favorite editing software, photo editing software is GIMP. Like I stated, uh, let me know what you guys use down in the chat. But I hope you guys have a good night and keep it techy.